as a young woman, young woman of color in her 20s, I chose the most high conforming professions out there by choosing to become a lawyer. And then as a young brown woman navigating the corporate towers, what I found is that the messages of conformity that I got at directly when I, while I was being bullied as a kid, were, were, they weren't ever as direct as the childhood bullying, but they were still there in the corporate environment. Like the messages around, no one ever said to me, as a woman, you should act more like a man to get ahead. But the messages were there. Or as someone who didn't grow up fancy, well, you should act really fancy. Or as someone um, who's brown, you should act really white to get ahead. No one ever said it directly, but the messages were always there because in the legal profession, there were all kinds of commentary around, oh, uh, you, well, you should be more resilient and you should speak more directly and you should ask for what you need and relationships are really important and team building is important. And now, uh, because we're going to be team building, now we're going to go and play golf. And I was like, okay, so picture like late 90s, early 2000s. I was like, I'm so sorry, my people are not playing golf. Like, we just got here, like, this is, we're new. And, and I tried it for, I tried it, and I was like, how is this called a sport? Do you agree it makes some noise? I'm like, how is this called a sport? Please, tell me, someone tell me. And then, because it's Canada, and you know this, Calgary, we only golf for like three minutes anyways, and then it was like, no, no, Rithu, we're team building, we're going skiing. And I was like, I'm so sorry, we're doing what? And then I was like, there I was in my 20s trying to learn how to ski. And what I realized is, oh, ski in Ontario, everyone, we call them mountains. <laughs> so what we're really actually doing is pretending to ski on these things that we call mountains. <laughs> and so I tried to pretend ski on these mountains on the bunny hills with three-year-olds. I'm not jo joking, at firm events. And I'm like, talk about epic humiliation. And then what I realized is, if you learn to ski in your 20s, you can die. <laughs> and I'm like, F this noise. I'm out. Bye. But then, but then I watched so much hockey. And then I drank so much beer. And I'm like gluten intolerant. And like, it was bad. Um, I ate a lot of steak, but I love steak. In Calgary, I love you. I love steak. I'm about the steak, okay? Medium rare shiraz, asparagus, the mash, garlic, ooh, potatoes, yeah. Up with a demi-glass, yeah. So I'm about it. So the amount of sports headlines I read, the things that I did to signal, I'm just like you, I'm just like you, I'm not different. And here's the thing, when we change who we really are to fit in, yes, the doors do open, but they never, that experience, fitting in, will never replace actual belonging. So I became successful at a young age, but the problem is, if you asked me in my mid-30s, how are you feeling about your life? Yeah, you're successful. I would have said to you, I am profoundly unhappy. I'm, I feel spiritually vacant. I don't know who I am anymore. And this is not how my life is going to go down. So a few things happened. I ultimately left my job on Bay Street. I started my DI consultancy, and now I travel literally around the world, often by a green light now, but now in person, having to, uh, getting to use my clothes again. Woo! Uh, to speak about this message. And you know what's really interesting for me that I have found is the following. When I was struggling in the towers, I thought it was just me. I thought I was having a singular experience. It was just me. But now I realize that no, this struggle to belong in the workplace and in society at large, this is a collective experience. In fact, as I have been speaking, make some noise. How, for how many of you has my story been resonating? Make some noise. Yeah. And you know, the reason that this is a collective experience is because, first of all, all kinds of hate and judgment comes our way. But secondly, we are wired as human beings to long for belonging.